Jeez, six games and we're still on the NES? Something tells me Capcom got a bit too comfortable with that console during the 90s when it came to Mega Man games. Yeah, despite the Super Nintendo being out for three whole years by this point, Capcom still insisted on making Mega Man 6 an NES game. Perhaps it was because of Mega Man X, which came out the same year? Who knows. Either way, Mega Man 6 is one I don't have many memories with compared to 3 or 5. I didn't play it much, so I'm sure that if it ends up disappointing me like 4 and 5 did, then it won't weigh on me as hard. With that being said, let's get into some Mega Man 6. Alrighty, how about we begin with this story? It begins with the launching of an international robot tournament. However, the tournament's 8 combatants are kidnapped and reprogrammed by the runner of the tournament, Mr. X. As it turns out, Mr. X, this old, white-bearded figure, was conducting everything for the past five games, having Wily do his bidding. So Mega Man sets out yet again to stop Dr. Wily. <laughs> Whoops, did I spoil that? Yeah, Wily is the culprit once again, and as much as I'd love to question it, we're six games in and it's already been established that this stupid plot twist crap is just for the purposes of adding a second fortress to extend game time. And it's a damn good thing it's some good game time. Jumping the gun a bit, yeah, but... Mega Man 6 is a massive improvement over Mega Man 4 and 5 in just about every way. Starting with the aesthetics. They went all out with creativity and the Robot Masters. Since this game's Robot Masters come from all over the world, the thematics are not only based around different powers and abilities, but also regions. For the past Mega Man games, Capcom held competitions for children to submit their own Robot Master designs to a Nintendo Power, and 6 was the first game to use entries from outside of Japan, and it showed. Nightman from Europe, Yamato Man from Japan, Blizzard Man from Canada, they did a great job making those stage locations and boss designs feel a bit more distinct than previous games, eh? Uh, sorry. Uh, the game also has a wonderful soundtrack, the best since 3 in my opinion. These tunes are rocking, and more so than 4 or 5, they reflect the setting of the stage as well. Mr. X and Wily's Fortress stages are my personal favorites, along with the final boss theme. But how about the gameplay? Well, 6 does a pretty damn good job pumping fresh blood into the series, thanks to some modifications made to the Rush adapters. No more Rush coil or jet, rather Rush helps by combining his body with Mega Man. Uh, saying it like that it makes it sound kind of gross, but it's actually pretty kick-ass as it gives Mega Man access to two new forms, Power Mega Man and Jet Mega Man. Jet Mega Man allows Mega Man to hover for a few seconds. It basically acts as a massive double jump, but it unfortunately removes his ability to charge shot. Power Mega Man, on the other hand, has a stupidly powerful charge shot that obliterates normal enemies, even Mega Man's normal charge shot couldn't take care of, while also destroying certain blocks. But its mobility is total garbage, and both forms can't slide. Despite these boons, I love these forms, as they not only add variety to Mega's moveset, but also allow for more open level design. The latter is also helped by the return of Beat, who is now obtained by fighting the real version of four specific bosses. Their levels have alternate pathways, with one leading to a boss that awards a Beat letter. Obtain them all, and you get Beat, who works the same as he did in 5, a heat-seeking missile. 6 also feels like it has more refined level design, no more of this stupid lol spikes rubbish, but at the same time it's also a very easy game, probably the easiest in the series. You know what though, I don't mind it. It may be an easy game, but Mega Man 6 is very low on the bullshit, it's very honest difficulty. Alright, fortress time. The sixth fortress in the series, and surprise surprise, it's really easy. The hardest part is probably this really tough and precise jump in the first stage, the timing is so tight. Well, you do get a bunch of goodies for doing it, so I guess it's not too bad. Huh, even Mr. X isn't putting out much of a fight. Looks like he put as much effort into this machine as he did his dumbass disguise. Wily's disguise is revealed, and now that his plan has failed, he decides to turn tail and run to his own fortress. Again. Wanna know how well that goes? About as well as it did in the last five games. The final boss of this game is pretty easy despite the awesome and climactic music, and its defeat leads to- HOLY CRAP, HE FINALLY DID IT! Yeah, he actually arrests Wily. Took him long enough, but credit where credit's due, I suppose. Props to him for taking six games to remember to bring a rope to the final fortress. I said Mega Man 6 was a solid game, and I stand by that. It is a good game, but... And I know this is going to sound predictable, but... I just don't think it compares to Mega Man 2 or 3. It's a solid game for sure, but it's the sixth game, and the easiest game, and its level design and gimmicks just don't compare to 2 or 3. I personally enjoyed the game a lot, but I can see why someone would consider the game as nothing but a substance-less distraction. But that's for you to decide. Me? Uh, I've, uh, I've gotta prepare. The next game we're looking at is Mega Man 7, the game I have uh, quite a lot of history with. It's the Blue Bomber's 16-bit debut, and you'd think that that'd be a reason to celebrate, but uh... 
I think I'll leave that for next time. For now, as usual, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you have a fantastic night.